Hello everyone and welcome to Mythstory, the show where we talk about myths from around the globe. For today's show, we'll be talking about the mythology of an indigenous group located primarily in Spain and France, Basque mythology. Basque mythology is similar to many mythologies in the sense that a lot of the stories are made to reflect one another and reference each other, but much of the characters in Basque mythology are not gods, rather spirits. And to begin this story, you all know what we need to talk about. Creation. The earth was a cold, desolate place, completely devoid of valleys or mountains. The only living thing was Benzosia the mother dragon. She was a great serpent that lived beneath the earth. She had seven jaws and fourteen fangs. She tossed and turned in her restless sleep and her scales began to tear apart the earth. They pushed up against the earth, creating the first mountains. From her jaws, fire came forth and rose through the cracks in the earth, erupting from the mountains and valleys. It burned the soil and the air, and steam began to rise and form clouds. It began to rain, and the battle between water and fire only formed more clouds. Finally, rain won out and filled all the low places. From the hot liquid and gas came the first people, the Bosque people. Benzosia, the mother dragon, still lives beneath the earth, and sometimes, in her restless sleep, she breathes fire but this time, it only comes from the tall mountains. Basque mythology is filled with legends rather than stories of the gods or spirits. Although they exist, there aren't many, so we'll start with some of the most popular stories of Basque mythology. Basahaun, the Wild Man One day, three boys left their home and went walking in the forest at night. It was getting cold and they needed a place to stay. All three brothers climbed the tallest tree they could find, and one of them saw a castle in the distance. They go up to the door, and Basa Andre, the wild woman, answers the door. They ask if they can stay the night. She agrees, but tells them to stay out of sight of her husband, Basa Haun, the wild man. He comes home and sniffs them all out, forcing them into slavery. But these three brothers have a sister at home. She was little then, but in time she grew up. One day the landlady and the farmer's wife had put out the new maize in the garden to dry. And when no one saw her, the little girl took some from her mistress's heap and put it in her own. When the mistress saw that, she began to cry out, saying to her, Bold hussy that you are, there is no one like you. You will come to a bad end like your brothers. And the girl began to cry and goes to find her mother, and says to her, Mother, had I any brothers? She says to her, Yes, my child. The girl, of course, goes searching for her brothers, and eventually finds them, and lives with them. But Basahoun smells her out too. The girl and her brothers decide one day that they would kill Basahoun. So the next day, when they go hunting, they kill him. Basa Andre comes home, and when she cannot find her husband, she assumes, quite rightly, that the girl and her brothers must have killed him. She takes out three teeth, and tells the girl to put them into each of her brother's baths. The girl does this, and when the third is done bathing, they all become oxen, and the girl is forced to take care of them. One day, however, the girl sees Basa Andre on a bridge, and says to her, if you do not make these three oxen men as they were before, I will put you in a red-hot oven. Basa Andre refuses, but tells her how to cure them herself. But this story lines up in more than one way with this next story. The Sister and Her Seven Brothers One day, seven brothers left home. After their departure, their mother gave birth to a little girl. And when this girl had grown a little, she went to a neighbor's house to play a trick on her. The neighbor says to her, You will be a good one, you too, as your brothers have been. The child goes home and says to her mother, Mother, have I some brothers? The mother says yes, 
and of course the girl goes out to find them. Eventually she does, and she lives with them in secret, making food and clothing until they eventually find her. One day the girl needed to make some food, but didn't have any fire. She went to the house of a witch, and the witch offers her some fire. But the girl isn't satisfied, she wants more. This infuriates the witch, and she gives the girl a parcel of herbs to put in her brother's bath. When the brothers are done bathing, they all turn into cows, and the girl is left to take care of them all alone. But one day, a king passes by and makes her a deal. If she agrees to marry him, he will take care of her for as long as they live. She agrees, but on the one condition that he never kills the cows. They get married, and one day the witch sneaks into the girl's room. She takes the girl out of her bed and throws her down a cliff. She then sneaks into the girl's bed and waits until the king comes home. When the king comes home, he finds her very much changed and tells her that he would not have recognized her. She tells him that it was her sufferings that made her thus. And in order to cure her more quickly, he must have one of the cows, the girl's favorite cow, killed. The king says to her, What? Did you not make me promise that he should never be killed? How is it you ask me that? But after some time, the king gave in and sent a servant to push the cow down the cliff. Although the servant stops his attempt when he hears a voice from down the cliff. He gets the king and they pull up the girl. She tells the king of what the witch had done prior and now. The king marches back into the room and says to the witch, I know your evils now, and if you do not immediately change these cows as they were before into fine boys, I will put you in a red-hot oven. The witch makes them fine men, and, notwithstanding that, the king had her burnt in a red-hot oven and threw her ashes into the air. But Bas mythology doesn't end there. We should also discuss one of the only actual gods the Bosque people have, Mari. Mari. Mari is considered goddess of the hearth, the personification of earth and nature. She is usually associated with weather. Legends say she used to be a girl who was changed into a witch for her disobedience. In these legends, they also reference the fact that she had seven brothers. Mari is the most important character in Basque mythology, having, unlike other creatures, a godlike nature. She is married to the god Shugar, who is sometimes seen as the devil. They meet every Friday in a cave to conjure storms. In many mythologies, storms, lightning, thunder, and wind are originated in the sky. The ancient Basque understanding was different. These natural phenomena are produced under the ground, and they emerge from some caves and chasms. These stories that I mentioned today seem to have a loose connection. This causes some mythologists to think that Mari was once the girl in these stories. Although yes, these stories have similar aspects, I think that they are meant to play off each other, like certain passages in Luke and First Kings. Although similar stories, they are not the same people. But no matter what you think, the fact remains. Boss Mythology has a lot to offer, and it's pretty awesome. Thanks for watching this episode of Mythstory on Bosque Mythology. Make sure to like and subscribe, and tell us what mythology you want us to cover next in the comments below. We'll see you next time. Yeah, it's just as you assuming it's nothing but these humans who like to blame mythology for everything they're doing. They pray for non-existent gods to clean up the mess, but never take responsibility, just claim it's a test. See that religion you've been given is shit and it's all poison. And it's partially the reason we bleed and it's all poison. Though your worldview is poison, and your outlook is poison. Deny it all you want, but the truth is it's all poison.